that's a good kind of segue to switch to um, your pharmaceutical. So you're, you're looking at, um, is it NSO200? I think it is. It is NSO200. Yeah. So can, can you talk about what you're doing with that, what, what, what it contains and, and what you're looking at there? Absolutely. Um, we started with NSO100. NSO100 was simply a combination of leucine and low-dose metformin. We showed in animal studies that leucine and metformin were highly synergistic um, and uh, not additive, but highly synergistic. And if you look mechanistically, it makes sense. There is crosstalk between CERT1 and AMPK. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, while people argue the degree to which AMPK is necessary for all of the effects of metformin. And I've certainly read that literature, know that literature well. Um, uh, There is no question that metformin does act on AMPK. And there is crosstalk between the two enzymes and indeed cross activation between the two enzymes. Less well known, is metformin does have a little bit of an effect on CERT1 as a direct effect as well. So uh, what we showed was a strong synergy uh, in vitro in in animal models. uh, And we took this into clinic and, uh, you know, we developed uh, an IND in in the US with the FDA, investigational new drug, uh, took it into a diabetes trial and, we did show benefit of the leucine metformin combination uh, to make it sort of outperform metformin, Mm. right? Mm -hmm. But but the strength of the benefit beyond metformin was not high. Mm -hmm. It was there. Again, it was the stuff of which makes great publications. Um, Right. And once again, that's not my primary interest. Uh, uh, Again, academic publication is important. We do it. Mm -hmm. We published our work, but that was not our primary interest. And we said, all right, how else can we improve this? Now, at that time, there were, well, I won't go into the very long story. I'll go into a shorter story. We were interested in nitric oxide. Mm. So nitric oxide, why we were interested in nitric oxide? Well, uh, endothelial nitric oxide synthase, ENOS, uh, produces nitric oxide, uh, best known, I guess, as a vasodilator. Um, Mm. uh, Right. Uh, Well, we were interested because there is crosstalk between that enzyme, ENOS, Mm-hmm. And CERT1 and between ENO. So we thought if we could do something to not only stimulate, not only stimulate CERT1, not only stimulate AMPK, but also stimulate ENOS, we might have a three-way interaction that produces a more robust synergy. Mm-hmm. So the problem was, how are we going to do that? Well, How we got there is a long story, but it has to do with some laboratory mistakes. Um, And uh, that story would, would, um, uh, uh, laboratory mistakes and what we thought was a negative control working too well um, uh, and things of that nature. But uh, at the end of the day, we landed on sildenafil. Now sildenafil is best known as Viagra. uh, it best known for its uh, inhibitory activity on PDE5, phosphodiesterase 5, um, uh, which it does very well, uh, but at low concentrations. Uh, and these are concentrations that are too low to actually inhibit PDE5. Mm-hmm. It's an ENOS activator. And when we combined very low low doses of sildenafil with our metformin and our leucine, we got some really interesting biology, which we then tested in animal models and 
found that we had a combination that, that made for robust weight and adipose tissue loss, made for robust regression of fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, robust improvement in insulin sensitivity. And we're like, okay, this is getting pretty interesting. Let's see what we can develop here. Mm -hmm. And so we actually developed two INDs uh, with the FDA, two investigational new drug applications. Um, one for NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. So the you know, more extreme form of fatty liver disease um, and the other for obesity. Right. And we took both of these, both of these forward and we got interesting results in both. Um, but the NASH space, uh, we are very interested in developing a NASH drug from this, but we have put that temporarily on hold to focus on obesity and cardiometabolic disease. Um, and that is so that we can focus with limited bandwidth, focus on one. Um, so yes, we had phase two trials on both and have that data in hand. Um, but what we have in a, a six month trial in obesity is Weight loss, I can't tell you about body fat. We don't have body composition, mm -hmm. but we have hit the a number of cardiometabolic endpoints. We produce weight loss. We reduce waist circumference. We improve insulin sensitivity. We lower triglycerides. Uh, we lower blood pressure and especially lower blood pressure in the subset of patients who came in with hypertension. Um, you know, nice robust lowering of blood pressure. And so here we have a drug that is ex very safe. Um, uh, how do you prove safety? Well, you don't prove safety, um, uh, uh, but you test safety. Um, mm. And it does not separate from placebo in our safety evaluations in terms of adverse event testing. Uh, you know, the standard thing you do in clinical trials, mm -hmm. it doesn't separate there. There are no, there's no abnormal biochemistry that occurs. There are adverse events don't separate from placebo with the exception of uh, some mild GI events in some patients that are trans that are early and transient and are to what you would expect from the amount of metformin we have in our combination. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so we have we, we have that and we believe that we can produce uh, obviously we need to go through further trials. This is not an FDA approved or any regulatory agency approved uh, combination. It's st still an investigational new drug. Um, but we believe we, with further clinical development, have a drug that can be highly, highly accessible uh, mm -hmm. in a form that is easily taken orally mm -hmm. uh, uh, at a, uh, let's see. Uh, we believe we can engage. I'm not going to talk about pricing specifically, mm -hmm. but in highly accessible pricing um, to make it available to a broad range of the population um, and really hit not only on weight, but on weight associated COVID or obesity associated comorbidities and improve overall cardiometabolic health. Yes. That would be excellent because obesity is such a prevalent uh, issue, should we say? Um, it is, and 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 let's be let's be clear. We know that there have been some excellent obesity drugs that have hit market. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we uh, when we started this, there weren't excellent obesity drugs on the market. There were obesity drugs on the market, but they weren't very good. Mm -hmm. um, now we have you know, drugs like semaglutide 
uh, producing double digit weight loss, um, uh, terzepatide producing even more robust weight loss. Um, uh, others that are fast followers uh, that are in the same incretin, broadly put, same incretin space um, uh, that produce a lot of weight loss, but they're injectables and they're expensive. Mm. Mm. Uh, and the, the the side effects are not. I mean, they're certainly safe, <laughs> but you know, the, the, I shouldn't say side effect. I would say the tolerability uh, does affect some people adversely in terms of the nausea. Um, but uh, that is not uh, that's not to be overly critical. That is simply to say there is a subset of people who are going to take those drugs. Um, they're going to be expensive. Um, uh, you know, they're, uh, I've, I think last I looked, uh, uh, the, in, in the U S, uh, uh, the, uh, 12, $1,400 a month, that sort of thing. It's not accessible to everybody. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's, and they're not covered by insurance, uh, for weight, for weight, they are for diabetes, obviously, uh, at least here in the U S. So for a number of reasons, we think there's a, there is a place for a weight loss drug that has high tolerability mm. and high accessibility and hits on multiple points uh, and is more of a metabolic drug than a, a hunger satiety drug. Certainly uh, the incretins are hitting the hunger satiety pathways uh, quite a bit. Uh, we are working more, as I like to say, below the neck. Right. Yes. To to just burn more fat. Um, mm -hmm. And so you said um, you you need to do some more trials. I mean, like, what's the kind of time frame or the kind of next steps on that? Huh. So we're planning our next trials now. All right. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I'm not going to share trial designs here, mm -hmm. uh, but we are planning our next trials now. Um, and uh, uh, we, we are quite optimistic. Our, our, our weight loss data uh, has already repeated itself in two phase two trials. So, you know, we're, we're, we're not worried about that. Now the question is how to best optimize. Excellent. Uh, how to best optimize and also longer term trials. Uh, uh, we've had, we have up to six months. We need to take it out to a year um, and move into phase three for, you know, trials of that length and long, longer. Um, so we're a couple of years out to be sure.